On this DVD I'm going to show you how to draw a one point perspective room and we'll be using this floor plan here. Uh, you can see that within the environment here I have two cameras set up. One is drawing the camera number one label and camera number two. We're going to be looking through camera number one for this DVD and then on the next DVD we'll be taking a look through camera number two looking at a two point perspective. So basically our point of view is going to be straight at the door here we're looking at it at a 90 degree angle to the room. So if we take from the camera here, draw a line through to the door, this will form a 90 degree angle, which means that this wall that we're looking at back here will be flat to us. And everything in the room that is parallel to that will be running parallel to the horizon line as well. So on my 11 by 17 sheet of paper, I'm going to draw my horizon line right, basically right through the center of the sheet of paper across like this and I'm going to select a point directly in the center of the room and also on the center of the sheet of paper. The reason I make a line like this is simply so that the vanishing point is more clear instead of having a big dot there where it could be anywhere. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to determine the height of the walls in relation to the horizon line where I'm standing. Now we'll assume that this room is an 8 foot room and therefore the height of the wall will basically be 8 feet. So what I'll do is I'll simply draw a very faint line through here, just like this, just to indicate the back wall there. Now I can choose to make this wall as high as I want or as short as I want depending on how close or how far away I am from the, uh, the back wall. Remember the basic rule of perspective is the closer you are to something the larger it appears, the further away the smaller it appears. So in this case here, we'll, we'll make it roughly about, let's say about this height right here, and let's just do a quick measurement on that to see how many centimeters it is. It's about five centimeters, so I'll make the bottom part five centimeters as well. Just make a mark right there at the five centimeter mark, and that will be the height of the room, and my eye level is at the four foot eye level. Now what I want to do is I want to draw the top ceiling line, and I'm going to make that parallel to the horizon line across here, so right at my top mark. I'm just going to draw a line across here. It's going to really hit the top part of the wall and I'll do the same thing down here. Now I put it on this side of the, the tick just so I can line up my line along here and make it more parallel. The other option that I have is I know that this is 10 centimeters here. I can simply mark from this point here down to the 10 centimeter mark right there and go across here and do the same thing. Mark off 10 centimeters. Where's 10 centimeters? Right there double check that one to make sure it's, I was off by a bit. I thought it was in the middle. So there's the 10 centimeter mark right there. And so by connecting these two together, that'll run through this point here, and that makes it parallel. Now the next thing I need to do is looking at my floor plan again, if I rotate it around this way, you'll see that this end wall here, the entire width of the room, is a specific width. And that's basically where our camera is orientated within the environment. We're about midway through this wall. So if I put a mark over here and a mark over here to define the ends of the walls, that will determine the overall width. So if we if we say the room is <clears throat> is approximately eight feet uh, high and uh, I'd say this width of this room here is somewhere in the realm of uh, I would say this is eight feet from here to here and then probably mm, seven feet across to there. So our vanishing point is directly in the center. So if, let's say it's 15 feet across. That means that our point of view, the vanishing point that's going to be right here on the wall, is about half the distance, which is about seven and a half feet. So if this is eight feet this way, then if I rotate that around this way, that's going to be eight feet here and eight feet over here. So I know that I can mark off approximately around there and approximately around there for the overall width of the room. If I just extend my lines out now, that will give me the overall dimension of the room. So now these two lines here will represent this corner here and this corner here. Now this corner here is actually hidden because there's a wall. This is a closet. But I'm drawing it in just for reference as far as my 
overall positioning within the room goes. Now I'm looking at this right now and I'm, I'm looking at the area that's around the outside here and I have a feeling that I'm a little bit too big like the overall size of this is a bit too big so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to knock it down a little bit and the easy way to do this the simplest way really would be to simply take from the vanishing point go through the corners of the room each of the corners like this and extend my lines out go through this corner here and extend the line through and this corner through and finally this corner down here and through. And what that represents is my floor line on the one side, the ceiling line on this side, ceiling line on this side, and floor line on this side. So now this gives me my scaling so I can now take and move these lines here back in, in depth simply by shifting the position of them within that environment. So let's say I want to take it to maybe about about there. Now all I have to do is just connect my dots or make sure that my lines are parallel. So I connect from this point right here parallel to the horizon line, connect it across to that point right there, and then from this side here I line it up to the line that's on that side there, bring that down until it intersects this point here, and now take this point and simply connect these two points together. Like that. Okay. And that now takes and pushes that wall back a little bit further. So now what I can do is I can start to plot out some of the elements within the room. Uh, we could actually say that, well, I think depth wise, as far as this area here goes, this should probably be a little bit deeper. I would say that corner comes somewhere around there. So in reality, we can just erase those lines off. And that's why, I mean, for the purpose of this DVD, what I'm doing is I'm drawing lines darker so that you can actually see them. And uh, what we're going to be doing after I get this all roughed out is I'm going to be taking a fresh sheet of paper and placing it over top of this one and then redrawing the whole thing in clean, tightening up all the stuff and putting all the details on. So it doesn't matter how messy or sloppy we are with this one here. We, we know that it's not going to be seen in the final version. But if I was to say, want to do my cleanup directly over top of my rough, then what I would do is I would simply draw it a little bit lighter in the original form. Just retape that down there. So I'd just be a little bit lighter with my pencil lines. Okay, so we'll say that that's that corner. Take my ruler and just line it up. I don't need to draw any of the lines across the ceiling or the floor other than in for the alcove because this part here goes in to there and I want to find that corner right there. So I'm going to make that line parallel again to the horizon line. Find the parallel line there. I'll draw it in just a little bit. The same thing on this side over here. Draw that in like that. And then sort of gauge the scale based on my floor plan. That's just using your eyes to, to gauge depth and distance. That's something you should get used to. Now we'll connect this point here for the ceiling or behind where the, the window is. That's the window wall. And do the same thing down here for my vanishing point. And I'll go across to there. Okay. Now, on my floor plan again, if I look at the, the floor plan point here, that line goes straight across to this wall here. So what I need to do is I need to find out where I'm going to have my window is going to sit roughly, or sorry, there's going to be a wall right there. The window is right here, it's about that wide. Then I'm going to have the door, a little space for the wall there, then the door. And the door I'm going to situate to right about there. Then I've got a little bit of a wall just on the other side of the vanishing point there. And from that point, that's where my lines extend out. So I'm just going to get a line right through there. And this line represents this line, that point right there. 
on the, the floor plan. So now what I need to do is I need to project these lines out here from the vanishing point, which are going to bisect the line that's going across there. So I might as well very lightly draw that in right across here. And from my vanishing point, actually connect this point here. I drew that line too long. It's, it's hardly going to angle at all because it's so close to the vanishing point here. It's just going to be on a slight bit of an angle. And come to that point right there. And the same thing is true for the top. Move here that. And you can see how there's just a slight angling there. Then from those two points, this point here and this point here, I'm going to connect those together. And in reality, this one needs to go a little bit higher because it's got to connect up to right about there. That's where that point should be. You got to keep track of this stuff, otherwise you're you'll throw your proportion of your room off, and things will look kind of weird. So that line's got to go across there until it reaches the wall. And that line that we did in very very lightly, I'll just darken that up a little bit now goes across there and then I can connect those two points there but I'm not going to do that at this point because uh, I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to see it because based on my point of view here if I've got a field of vision that comes out like this you can see that this corner here is going to obscure this corner back here so what I need to do is I need to plot this area here bring it out and find out where that corner there is on my overall, overall floor. Now actually if you look at the floor plan again you'll see that this wall here if we divide it in half, there's a line right there, that's where this line here lines up. So it's actually half the distance on that wall. So if I take half the distance here, divide that exactly in half, right to there, and then project from the vanishing point through to this point here, just very lightly draw a line down like that. That will represent the front wall, but I still need a gap in there so I can guesstimate that by scale to say that it's probably about there. And what there is where that corner is going to be. I don't need to draw this line here, but I do need to draw my vertical line here. I'm just going to find the parallel line that's closest to it, which is this one here. Line it up, then draw that line up. So now that will represent that corner this is the floor line across here. And the depth of that comes across here towards us. I'll probably be able to see just an edge of that right there. It'll just be within my field of vision. Somewhere around there. That'll go right off the page. There. Okay. Now, if I want to find out where the height the high point is, this corner that's right here down on the floor, if I want to find out where the height for my ceiling is, it's simple. All I have to do is go from this point on this wall here, radiate a line straight up, so I find the parallel line that's right there from the corner, just slide my ruler over a little bit until I reach that point, very lightly draw the line up until it reaches that point right there. That point I'm going to connect through to my vanishing point over here, and that'll extend the line across the ceiling. I'm not going to draw the line across here, but as soon as it bisects there, that's my ceiling line for that part of the wall there. So now I can start to erase some of these non-essential lines that I'm never ever going to see back here. Just so they don't start to obscure my overall scheme of what I'm looking at. Because sometimes you can get kind of confused by all the lines that are radiating out all over the place. If you can erase stuff down, that's good. The other thing you could do is you can go over it a little bit heavier with your pencil just to darken it in so that you know that that's your final line like that. Alright, so we've got the closet wall is right here. We're going to have a bookshelf on this wall here. Uh, over here we've got our little alcove that extends away. And uh, that's the basic format of the room right there, the, the one point perspective. Now the next thing we need to do is start to plot out where all the elements are on the floor. So before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to 
tighten up this area here, draw the actual door on so they can just get a sense of the elements within the room. So I'll just extend my line down here for the one side of the door. I'm going to keep this line across here as being the top of the door and the top of the window. There's the other side of the door there. There's the edge of the window. Which I'm not going to extend all the way down to the floor. Actually, I extended that too far there. In reality, sorry. See, that's, this is where I've got all the excess lines on and I misunderstood what I was looking at. So that was the old ceiling line there. This is the new ceiling line here and I've actually extended through onto the floor there. So I don't want these two lines here. Okay, so I'm going to want to chop this off a little bit because your door does not go all the way to the ceiling. Neither does most windows. I'm just going to trim that off right there and make the top of the window parallel to that. The door does go down to the, all the way to the bottom of the floor. So I'll just darken this line in here so it's clear. And I'm just going to shorten up the window here just a little bit. About there. Okay, and I'll just erase these lines off. So now we've got the door, the window, the wall that's there, the wall coming this way, very sharp, you can hardly see it, the flat wall there that the bookshelf is going to go on, a little alcove that goes behind there, the wall over here that the chair is going to be sitting on, a little table with the lamp on top of it, and over on this side here we've got our entranceway where we'll have a table here, the alcove that goes in, we'll have a side table here, a couch, and we probably won't see the, the table on this side here, but we will see the rug and a coffee table right in, in this area here. All right. So the next thing to do is start to plot out these things that are drawn on the floor plan here, plot out their positions on the floor in basic one point perspective and just block out their their uh, depth and dimension. Not dimension as far as the height goes but just dimension as far as the, uh, the floor plan goes. So let's start off with the rug that's right out here in front of the door and uh, we'll just extend that because it's the same width as the door. So from the vanishing point there, I'm just going to take the base of the door there. And that one line will be angled just slightly. Like that. And the rug comes to about midway of this wall here, which will cut it off right about there. So I make this line horizontal, parallel to the horizon line. Like that. And that's now positioning for my rug on the floor. Oops, a little lamp that's dinging on my desk there. Now we'll do the table that's over in this area here. The table is fairly close to the wall. We'll just separate it away just a little bit on one side there. And then extend from the vanishing point through to this point here. back of the table right there. Okay. Now next we might as well do the, uh, the floor rug here. It's almost in the center of the room. It's, it's closer to the one edge there. You can see how it lines up with the edge of the table there and about one quarter of the rug. So there's half the rug there. One quarter of the rug distance there. So I can go by my rug here. If I split the rug in half here and to a quarter I can go from this point right here through the vanishing point and extend my line down. Radiate that down across like this. Okay. And I know it's going to line up with this corner over here. Across like that. And it extends from this corner here in the front of that table there. That's the edge of it that's closest to the couch. There's the positioning for the rug on the floor. Now I can put in my little coffee table that's on the side there. Again, this line is parallel to the horizon line. Very close to the wall there. It's going to come up almost to the edge of the rug. I'm not going to make it too deep. Into about there. I can extend the front to the vanishing point. Like that. 
I'm just going to extend the line, continue the line across here for the front of the couch. Put a little bit of a gap in there. Like that. And the, uh, the couch will probably extend, uh, I would say, probably, well, if I look at my floor plan, there's the edge of the couch. It comes almost to the same point as where the arm and the chair is, and the chair is right up against there. So let's do the, the dimensions of the chair over on this side here. Make this line parallel. Find that bottom corner there. Extend this out. And the front of the chair comes almost, it's actually a little bit deeper than this line here. So if I extend that line from that point along that wall, do a very light tracing there. I need to go in a bit further on that. I'm just going to slide it into about there, and then across like that. And then the width of the chair will make it roughly about there. I'd say right about there. Put a coffee table right beside it, so give it a little bit of a gap. And that's going to extend pretty much off the off the paper there. So then since the edge of the chair is going to line up. Now I don't know if you've noticed what I've been doing, but I've been going parallel with everything up here, but as soon as I got down to here I started, like the walls there are parallel, but then what I started to do with the couch is I started to pull my perspective just a little bit. I started to bend it just a little bit. I'm doing a little bit of a cheat here just to create a little bit of a warped perspective. Rather than making it pure parallel, it'll be, appear to be a little bit flat. And because we are looking at the couch and everything over here, on an angle, more of a 45 degree angle, it does create what's called a two-point perspective, which we'll discuss in the next DVD, how to work out a two-point perspective. But I have a vanishing point that's here. My other vanishing point in the room sense goes to infinity, so that makes the lines parallel. But what I'm doing is I'm just cheating it a little bit by angling it this way to bring that vanishing point that's over there just in this way a little bit. And so I started to do the same thing over here, where I started to cheat these lines. They're no longer parallel. They're starting to bend this way. So if I was to continue this line off here, it would actually extend off the paper, but I want to cheat it a little bit, and if I do that, I'd pull this line to about there on the edge. That would be the edge of the couch over there. So there is a little bit of a visual cheat that I'm creating in this environment. And that's something you, you learn through experience and just by getting a feel of whether something looks right or not. Now the last thing we need to do uh, is, or the second last thing is we need to put the bookshelf in and then the coffee table down here. So let's do the bookshelf first. We'll just pull the bookshelf a little bit away from the wall, not a lot. And we'll do the front edge there. And then we need to put a little bit of a gap between the corner here and there, which is actually deeper than what the chair is. So if we say that point goes to about there, then we can go up to our vanishing point here connect that to the base of the wall there, and then extend that line up. I'm going to find this edge here, make it parallel, since that is my closest edge. Right there, and then find the front edge here. It's just going to make a little bit of a sliver of the edge there, and extend that up. Now we can pretend that this is the, just to not create extra lines here, but we'll say that's the top front edge of the shelf there. Just extend that off the edge. And then from this point here I need to extend the line down to the vanishing point to create the depth for the top of the bookshelf. Just across like that. So I just chopped it off there. Just erase this line here down. Okay, so it's starting to look a little bit more got in our, our environment here. We get a sense of where everything is. Okay. Don't need this line either. I'm using a, a barrel prism color, actually it's Faber Castell pencil crayon which makes it difficult I'm using a, a barrel prism color actually it's a Faber Castell pencil crayon which makes it difficult to erase because it's it's a chalk based not chalk based but it's 
it's a more resilient uh, pencil and it doesn't erase very well. So now let's do our coffee table. The coffee table is directly in front of the couch. It's off just slightly here, but it's parallel on this edge here. So I'll use that line in the edge of the, the couch there as my guide. I'm not going to make it angle the same way. I've got to pull it and twist it around so that it matches up to the edge of the, the carpet there. But we'll just put that back edge right about there. And this edge here lines up to just inside the doorway. So if I take that point there through to the vanishing point, I'll give me this edge right here. Put a little bit of a space there between the couch and the edge of the coffee table just for people's feet and legs to fit in. Bring it across like that. And then on the couch, we'll bring it in just a bit to about there. And we'll just cheat our angle a little bit. Put the back edge, or the front closest edge of that coffee table is right there. So now we have all of our elements blocked in on the floor. Now the next thing to do is to elevate them up off the ground and give them a specific height. So if our horizon line here is four feet, that gives us a generalized idea of, of where things can go. Um, couches are usually about three, two and a half, three feet roughly off the ground. So if we go from our, our perspective uh, horizon line right here, if that's the four foot level right there, and four feet down to there, there's zero on the floor. So if we take half that distance, that's two feet right there, and that's three feet right there. So that would be the height of the back of the couch. So this now becomes a game of connect the dots. Basically, you're going from each of your corner points of your objects within the environment and just raising lines up to the appropriate height. So if we go from the back corner right here on our couch and draw the line straight up, making it parallel to this corner line right here, comes up like that, and then going through this point to the vanishing point, that will give us our top back edge of the couch. Okay, this has just got an imprint on the, the wall there. We can do the same thing for the table. We'll make the table shorter. We'll make the table about two feet off the ground, which would be right about there. So if I project that line across the wall, that gives me my height right there for the table. So all I have to do is just connect these lines up here. And through those bisecting points, those will be my two points for the top edge. So if I radiate my lines up here, this line comes up like this, and this corner here comes up like that. Now if I take from this point here, match up the perspective that I've got here and here, bring it up, and going through that corner to this corner here, and from this corner through to this corner here, these two points now should go to the vanishing point that's over here. If I've been accurate enough, pretty close, those will match up like that. Okay, so that now gives me my, my box for my side table. The arm of the, the couch, I still have to do the, the dimension and thickness of the back of the couch, so if we bring that out to roughly about, let's say there, I can then draw my line down here on the side. Half the height there, maybe just a little bit below, will be my arm for my chair for the couch. Which I'll radiate off this way. And then I can connect this lower point here on the box on the ground for the couch, bring that up, and that gives me the corner for the arm. And from that point there, that bisection point, I go to the vanishing point over here and radiate that across. And that's the height for the arms on this side. So now I can come over here to this point on the couch and draw a line parallel, I'll use the edge of the paper as my guide parallel to the edge of the paper and where it bisects right there that's the closest corner of the couch and I radiate that off in perspective doing that cheat angle there back that way gives me that edge. I can come up to the table here, the coffee table, and do the exact same thing. Just extend my lines up. I'm not going to make it too high a coffee table. Just go through each of the corners, just extending the lines up a little bit. And then from this point here, all I have to do is just determine the height here if I want to make it. So let's say it's the thickness of the, the ruler. 
way it lines up with that line down there. If I do this, I can just finish off those lines there. And now from this point here and this point here, I can go over to the vanishing point. And where that bisects this line right here, right there, that's the edge there for the back edge. Same thing with this one here. If I take from this corner here to the vanishing point, radiate it off where it touches this point here, those two points connect together and form the top of the back edge. Do the same thing with the table that's over here. Extend those lines up. And this table I'm going to make it three feet high because it is a, an entrance type table. So there's my three foot level there to that point. So now all I have to do is connect over to the vanishing point over there along that wall and that will give me height line right across there. So that bisects that point. This one bisects that point there. If I draw my lines parallel to the horizon line, extend that one out and extend that one out. Where that bisects this point here and this point here, those two points now should radiate off to the vanishing point to form the front edge of the table there. The uh, carpet in front of the door. I don't have to do anything with that. We've already done the bookshelf. Now we come over here and we simply have to do the chair that's on this side. So same thing. It's a matching chair that goes with this couch. So we'll make it three feet high on the back wall. Here's the floor. There's four feet on that line. Half of that right there, that's two feet, and half of that would be three feet. So from that point right there through my vanishing point, I'm going to extend a line across that back wall. And that gives me the height for my chair. So going from this back point here, all I have to do is parallel the line up. And where it bisects through there, that gives me a shadow on the wall of the back edge. So I'll extend that piece out from the wall just a little bit to give the, the back cushion a little bit of thickness. Go from the vanishing point here to define that thickness on the edge there. Where those points bisect, I bring that down. Some of these are overlapping pre-existing lines, which is okay. Like that. Now the height of the arm there, remember we determined the height of the arm was just slightly below the two foot level. The coffee table on the side was two feet, so we wanted to be just slightly below that. So here's the two foot level here. We'll just go slightly below that. So from this point here on that corner line, we're just going to extend the line out here, parallel to the horizon line again. Stop right at that point because that's the front edge of the cushion there. And then go from the bottom corner here, extend this line up, bisect that point. So from through this point here, I'm going to go to the vanishing point. That's going to give me my front edge on the top of the arm of the chair. And that's actually a very short line because I got to take from this corner here a line that's parallel to the vertical line. That's going to go to there. And then this will extend across horizontally parallel to the horizon line back to this corner here on the couch or on the chair, which now boxes it off. I know it's a little bit complicated because there's a lot of lines in there. I just erase some of these down. We won't see that corner anymore because that's hidden in behind the couch. You won't see the bottom of the bookshelf. So that makes it slightly more clear. Let me just darken this in so it defines it a little bit better. There's the far edge of the arm. Here's the close edge of the arm. Here's the far edge of the back of the chair. Close edge. Top. very back edge against the wall. It's the closest corner on the back of the couch or the chair. Now this part here I'm not going to darken in because we still have to put our coffee table in, right? So let's just extend our lines up. Two foot level was right about there. So it's just slightly below, or actually this is the two foot level right here, this line extending across like this. So 
from that point there, and from this low point, bring the line up, where it bisects right through there. That's the front edge of the coffee table. So this edge here, because the coffee table is slightly higher than the arm of the chair, it's going to be obscuring it slightly. Bisects, I go through the vanishing point to give me the front edge of the coffee table. Across like this, just a very short little line because I have to go parallel here. That's the closest edge on the side of the coffee table to us. And then drop this line straight down. And there's a little bit of a twisting taking place there because remember I cheated the perspective there. So I might want to fiddle with that a little bit. It's not looking quite right. It looks like it's off kilter a little bit. So I'll, set, I'll have to play around with that when I do my cleanup. But there's my basic blocking out of the entire room now in, uh, in simple one point perspective. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a fresh sheet of paper, put it over top of this, and we'll do all the cleanup and tighten the whole thing up and start to put the details on it.